All right. Oh, I love having so much memory on a new device. I am having a wonderful day out. Dang, I wonder if I should try to reposition this so you all can kind of get an idea. Actually, yeah, 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 yeah. This is a better... Maybe that background was nice, but I don't even know if you guys can see what's going on in the background. Probably not. This, this might all be for nothing. Let's see. Let's put it up here. Here we go. Let's do this. And then prop it up like so. And I'm not seeing much background. Maybe I can get a bit more of uh, the area. But here, we'll do that. All right, well, so uh, the uh, Eugene, Oregon waterfront project has gone amazing. This is, I mean, I, I can't praise it more highly, honestly. Um, I am really, like, I'm, I'm, I'm very, 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 very impressed. There's really that issue with Oregon. That, that's the horrible real issue is that the kind of talent that is in design and is in like kind of the design of public spaces um, is is very high level. There's very talented people here. When they want to do something, it can be it can get done. Um, it's just that there's also then all these people who don't really believe in in just having even the most basic or fundamental industries. And uh, this is this kind of effeminate and cowardly, um, very West Coast, because it's, it's not really native to Oregon. It's something that really came in um, 70s, 80s. Like, somebody made me understand this. Like, no, 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 no. People moved here, and they brought more and more of this misunderstanding about, no, you've got to work. You've got to actually have some type of industries that you really um, uh, are remunerative and um, start a long tradition of multi-generational wealth through some type of resource extraction, refining, um, timber, things like that. And that there's all these like hippies. I mean, really, it was it's the, the cowardly licentious, relatively worthless hippies that, that have moved here and have brought this culture of complete ignorance of fundamental market economics outside of dealing drugs or like flipping houses or something like that. Like they won't deal with um, the fundamental good that comes from making sure there's a large percentage of your boys learning trades and that those trades, that, I mean, yeah, and, and that those trades become multi-generational wealth. Um, so, so there was, uh, the, yeah, so, but the, you get these people in civil engineering who are very, very talented. And, uh, sorry, I thought I saw, like, this bug, like, floating around me. And uh, so I wanted to make sure to touch on something that got brought up in a recent um, video by Nick Fuentes where he really went after Judeo-Christianity and he nailed something about abortion in Jews and about the Protestants. So, he was correct. The Catholics were the anti-abortion people. Um, in the 80s, without the Catholics and a portion of sort of the evangelical movement, um, they, they would have. They, it, 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 they, were, they were the most ardent. The Catholics have consistently been the most ardent. Um, Judeo Christianity, or this thing that came out of um, Protestant uh, Protestantism, I, from what I'm detecting, everything I, I recall as I've grown up and I've seen it used in the press, this is a pretty modern concept um, that really was sort of a Reagan that Reagan Bush type of thing going on with the, the Republicans that, that uh, you know somehow the, you know the Bible unites these people and 
So, so there was something, that, okay, what ends up becoming important is this. Nick Fuentes is correct. Jews have a very different view of morality than uh, Christians. Christians coming out of Greek ortho, the Greek Orthodox tradition, um, therefore the Greek philosophical tradition, and fundamentally methods by which you achieve the goal of holiness and uh, and chrism and all these things that that w because you did what was recommended to you by the generation before this is not believed by um, many people there's a reason why people think that the, the Christians just read the Bible and then do crazy kookball things because We've, even when you're Catholic, you are told nothing about the Orthodox Church. Um, the, yeah, you are told nothing about it. In the 80s, there was fundamentally the only, the, not even why the cross was done the way it was done. Nobody in religious classes, religion classes, could explain precisely why the Orthodox crossed themselves differently. And it, of course, for us only to find out, no, the Catholics cross themselves differently. You know, the, this is what the Catholic Church has the problems it has because it has never dealt with. We wanted to leave because of Frankish kings and people fighting over the papacy. With it, that's why, and and that, yeah, and and that, yeah. And, and that really the Orthodox see it as once the Crusaders sacked Constantinople on the way to the Holy Land, they knew that a schism was inevitable, that that, that was the beginning. They said that was the beginning, really, of the, of the schism. So, um, and, and, that, that the, and that Catholics are very ardent in being very untruthful about this, and, and it has discredited them. And they've lost, they've hemorrhaged all these, they've hemorrhaged millions of members. Um, and, and I'm not wrong. It, it's, I, I really don't like when people are like, but it says this in the New Testament, yada, yada. And it's like, I'm sorry, we have this period of time written down. This is all written in languages that can be understood. It, we know what people did. We know what was claimed and why Rome was claimed to be, have to be this ultimate authority, even though that flew in the face of, of the tradition for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years up until that time, and everyone knew it. Um, so it just, yeah, it just, after a while, it just became, it just, it's just the thing of that the Catholic Church keeps discrediting itself. Um, so that's why then you get this severe ignorance of Catholic history and then Orthodox history. So that by the time you get to something like the 80s and 90s, you have this wide variety of American Protestant churches that have, I mean, just all kinds of ideas. And, um, and, and people who then leave them can quote line and verse, but have never heard the, the quotes from, from various saints. So that when you're like, no, no, that's that's a, that's that's this thing from this saint, blah blah blah. So oh, so it's like commentary on the Bible, and it's like, okay, so you're you're a moron, you're a, you're a hick, you're a rube, you're a backwater Protestant rube. Okay, got it. You know, like you don't like you your your Christian culture is fundamentally American and is about three generations old. Because that's really what Protestants, to some degree, also have to face, is you're, you don't have Christian wisdom. This is why your, your, your churches repeatedly die. They, they, there's, no, there's no root, there's no mother dough. This is how the, the, the morality and ethics have been undone over generations. And this is something I could say from the outside, like from somebody who at a certain point had become like kind of this, I, I loved zinging the Christians, you know, and stuff. Um, that's why I have such a hard time with the Orthodox. Because the way that the Orthodox argue their point, they argue it from the Greek way of arguing things. 
and so it's it it it's very very you can't really beat it. Um, you just have to say at some point, I just don't believe your fundamental what your I don't believe this assertion. This assertion, this assertion, and and without that, you don't have faith. So it won't matter. But why they think what they think, why they say what they say, it, it, what their ethics and moral system is, is completely harmonious through and through. Um, yeah. So, and then when you start to understand how the Orthodox live, then one would understand, oh, this is, you live a very strict lifestyle. Your lifestyle is very, very, very strict. And so this is one of the things of that, that this, specifically this rabbi who I studied with during this class on, um, on Sephirotic Kabbalah, so the ten Sephirot, and, and fundamentals, the fundamentals of the, of the Kabbalah tradition. So this would be their form of mysticism, and that there's training in their form of mysticism, because Christianity is seen by Jews and by itself as fundamentally mystical, that the practical rules are the applied mysticism of sorts. Plus, there's all these commandments in the Old Testament on lifestyle. Um, people could say, oh, well, yeah, that's the point. They, all these people, they don't, they don't do all these things that the Jews do, this, that, and the other. And it was really this understanding of, well, these people never heard of any of this. These are strict. These were strict. Given specifically at, to the ethnic nation of Israel, you know. The, the, this is, um, yeah. And and, and and if do you damn yourself by eating? Do you damn yourself by drinking? Or do you damn yourself by an entirely different set of behavior? You know, and then there's all these examples from the from the, the the Christian tradition, from the New Testament of, you know, that there, there's a lot more you can do that is good, than and trying to avoid the bad. Like avoiding the bad, to some degree, it's like okay, yeah, you you do that. I would suggest you take more time trying to do good, because you see, avoiding the bad, well, you've got that handled. You're a human, and that comes from a, a specific rabbi. So. Um, Nick Fuentes was um, when he he was absolutely correct that 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 in the Jewish tradition ethics and morality are much more gray. Uh, Yaakov and uh, Esau are two very very good examples. Um, Jacob and Esau of fundamentally the the. The Jewish morality, there, there would like almost an archetype, an absolute archetype of Jewish morality. Um, and uh, even when one looks at the book of Job and, and kind of how far Job is allowed to go and then how God answers and all this stuff and, um, it, it, and, and this entire idea of that, that, that everyone argues out the morality of the issue. And, uh, but, one, but you can never know the mind of God. You can never know God's motivations. Um, so th there's this gray. This, there's this, gr this it, morality is gray. Um, Jews see what, because Christianity to them, Orthodox is Christianity. All the other stuff is stuff that, you know, it's, it's Christianity, but it, it's not like, they know the difference. They know. They, they, because for them, this is the, this is literally the Christianity of pogrom. So, um, with the Orthodox, the, the, uh, because they, they could, they could handle the Protestants and, and the, the Catholics a little more easily, um, yeah, as, as long as Catholicism is fundamentally weak in the nation, um, it can be handled. Protestantism, as long as you um, do this dance around the, the Old Testament, and uh, Protestants are, are just, they, they will get fascinated with Jewish mysticism. They, they're, they're, the, these two, you would, we would know nothing about Kabbalah Kabbalah would have almost no foothold uh, if it wasn't for the Protestants. That, I mean, it just that that's there. There would be almost no Wicca, no witchcraft without the Protestants. Like 
they they're the ones who who always they have some arm that that's trying to make Christian magic or or something kooky something kooky um, and and it, a big part of that is where then you find in the political and, and social sphere how they meet in Freemasonry Protestant it, it, there's Catholics who shouldn't be in Freemasonry um, because you're not supposed to be in secret organizations Orthodox are absolutely positively forbidden from uh, Freemasonry because it's a seat you make secret vows um, but the the idea in in Judaism that's not that's not a bad thing that's and this is why uh, Nick Fuentes talking about it seems like Jews do really organize in this yes and that's why Freemasonry is accurately seen as kind of a Judaizing it, that 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 it's being associated with sort of Judaizing of Christianity um, is is accurate. It, that is accurate. The idea here is is really devil's advocate. I keep switching back and forth. So devil's advocate at a time when ideas could get you killed, this becomes very valuable. Somebody would offer then, well, what 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 would have been the um, what would have been the option? Um, the absolutely preposterously stupid ass rule of of Catholic monarchs, low Catholic nobles. It was literally Catholics themselves that caused the Spanish colonies to to leave um, and and may be uh, become ungovernable. They became ungovernable through the Masonic lodges. Um, to this day. Uh, Filipino stick fighting, you know, practiced by Catholics, but it's also heavily associated with Freemasonry and its history. Um, and so, this absolute right and wrong is seen as unique to Orthodox Christianity by Jews. This is why you've seen recently attacks directly on the Russian Orthodox Church outside of Russia, here in the United States. Um, this is also why you're seeing like more and more of kind of like the rise of these dangerous Catholics and blah blah blah. Um, and Nick was right; Protestants did go along um, a lot with um, being okay with abortion during the 80s, or fundamentally kind of not fighting it as much as, say, like the uh, the Catholic Church did, and that you would really find, like, they would really organize, like, I mean, at, like, at schools, you know, they would, they would, they were serious, they were very, very serious, and they have to be kind of saluted for this, because they kept up the fight. Um, I also wanted to make sure that I touched on too how the evangelical movement like there was a period of time I mean the evangelicals were like very seriously a thing um, since the mid uh, or the aughts um, the evangelicals have been dying and a lot of this is, is our millennials who are like okay who is Saint blah 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 and what is this quote by him that's all you end up having to do. And then you look into the history and, and the history of, of Christianity because so much was written down, then, therefore it is a wisdom tradition. Um, secularists, to a great extent Jews um, in general, the religious Jews, they, they don't see this as a living tradition of wisdom. Um, they, they, yeah, they, they, they don't see it the same way as they see sort of the way that their rabbis organizing, so they keep it very alive. They keep their wisdom very alive. Um, and also, I want to make sure I have run into Protestants that they will go back to the early source texts. That they're the real thing. This is another thing: translation and the spreading of the knowledge of the Hebrew language among Christians. That was a big part big, 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 humongous part, Protestants. Got to give them their credit where credit's due on that one. No way around it. No way around it. They also are the reason why 
Latin and Greek were in public schools. If it wasn't for the Protestants, you wouldn't have had Bibles in, in, in public schools. It was that the, the, the Catholics specifically wanted their, their version of the Bible. Um, they didn't want to use the Protestant version, and this, this erupts into what's called the Bible riots of, I think, Philadelphia. Um, and that's in, like, the late 1800s or something like that. So, and that creates the Catholic school system. The Catholic school system it, it progresses into existence from there. Um, the idea that uh, Jews would see abortion as something that it's like it's a gray area and that they're, they're openly saying that this is an assault on their, on their religion specifically um, the problem that they're going to have, of course, is, well, okay, so when is a human alive? Like, what, it, that, that you're going, now you're going to have to deal with this, the absolute metrics and science of it. Um, at which point, it'll, it will have to be that they will be insisting on, no, society has to dance around sort of how we just come up with the way our religion is. Because that's a big part of this, too. A lot of this oh, this new abortion thing, oh, this is, you know, specifically violates the way that, you know, Jews see the thing of life and blah, blah. And it's really this thing of, no, 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 this is just anti-Christian. This is just anti-Christian, anti-life. Um, they're, they're just being spoilers. And a lot of the organizations that um, Nick was mentioning, these are tikkun olamers, um, the reparation of the world, um, and so an important that thing to understand is while you would have these people sort of on the political left in, here in the States, um, if you look, say, uh, there, there's, if you first, if you look the organization up, then you look them up on Facebook, you'll find they have kind of two, sort of two different ways that, that you'll get an understanding of them. Because uh, there's an organization, B'nai Baruch, and they are very much tikkun olam, um, mystical Judaism, very much on the educational thing. They're the Kabbalah media people, uh, Rav Lightman's people. And, um, but they're seen as an ultra-religious um, and nationalist cult that's, that, that's considered uh, by the left of Israel very dangerous. But these are people that are a major part of tikkun olam and, and, uh, and, and teaching of that kind of thing. Um, Hillel is also another that at some times it's Jewish and nationalist. At other times it seems to suddenly be you know, all about a very left of center secular view. Oh, if the, the, these, these Gentiles and Christians, they don't understand how much they oppress us Jews, you know. <clears throat> we can't become doctors, we can't become <clears throat> TV people, we can't get into publishing, we can't, you know, get into finance, you know, we're so oppressed. Um, it, it, do I really do think that, like, no, no, it, it is that, that politically Jews do see society as a thing that, that, that it's just naturally you're supposed to bend to your interests and will. Yes, yes, I absolutely do. I think every group does that. I think that it is the rare thing of ultra-Puritan Protestants that they're like, no, 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 that's not fair play. Um, I, I think that, that, that I found that to be something very, very, very English and British in its, in its origin. Um, they also have their own problems, of course. They're Yankee Puritans and Protestants. <laughs> So, the, so they'll have a tendency of then embracing uh, uh, kook ideas, then embracing, um, you know, things like, like Freemasonry, uh, taking that into the realm of ritual magic, and then trying to make the whole world, you know, agree to feminism and abortion, and uh, in the name of, of universal literacy and suffrage. Um, that's why also I think it's interesting we see with the Orthodox being that the Orthodox one had to fight Islam then two had to fight um, the Germans and, and the Axis and then they had to fight 
uh, communism, then they had to survive through communism, they haven't had as much opportunity to go fucking around with wild-eyed sets of ideas to spread around. They've just been like, dude, if we live through this, if we live through this, that, you know, oh, I mean, that seems to be the thing with the Orthodox. <laughs> is, what, what is it? You know, it just, it, we survive, you know, like, that's it, you know, like, it, we, we continue, you know. Um, you know, while it's like the Catholics, it's like, oh, well, you know, is it Sunday? Yeah, I'm Catholic. <laughs> you know, but, but anyway, um, the, the, I do like, though, that Fuentes and these other people have kind of changed their, their view. I really do think that the Zoomers have a lot to gain from the Orthos and the Caths having a lot to do with one another and really, really getting back into let's talk about what the various saints had to say. This stuff about if you're not reading it in Latin, maybe you're not gay. You know, I mean, just, it's just, it just some of it is, I'm just sitting there like, no, this is stupid. You guys are going to look back on this and understand how fucking juvenile and stupid this was and you're trying to show off that you, you were studying Latin and stop. You know, fucking stop it. It's, it, in a generation, is this going to be the way that you will pass the tradition on? You know, um, it, it, yeah. Will this matter? Will this save your grandchild? Is this what's going to have your grandchild baptized and confirmed in the faith? That, that, you, that you argue whether somebody should have a very good uh, educational Bible from in English or should they go out of their way to, for years to study Latin so that they could read the Vulgate, you know, or whatever. Um, that, that those, that's not, that, that's not, that's not doing something. That's, that's not doing something. You're doing, you're kind of doing what the left does and they want to argue about, you know, who's gayer, you know. Are you sure you're really as gay as I'm gay? You know, um, it, it really is a matter of how do you make, how do you correct errors in fundamental understanding of doctrine? How do you deal with criminals and deviants within the church? Like, that's a big one. You guys are going to have to figure out how, that's, that's the first thing, is how do you actually excise deviants from the Catholic Church? How do you take it back from what is obviously a mafia and black of, 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 of buggers and, and money uh, oh, uh, what's it? Not money launderers. Oh, I can't believe I'm forgetting. It's what what made everything jump off in the first place was the San Jose. It was San Jose, and that people couldn't figure out why the the numbers weren't working out. And then the Catholic Church, or the the locals, were like, "No, oh, you can't see the books." And so it was uh, yeah, I'm forgetting the word for it. Um, but yeah, th this was something I just wanted to bring up because it is real. It, it is very, very real that, that, um, the different religions and, and he's, he's also correct in Buddhism and Taoism are neutral on Christianity to a great extent, to a great extent. Um, Buddhism tries to find, defines a lot of the similarities very, uh, they, 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 to them, it makes sense. That there'd be similarities. Because they're like, well, yes, if you're trying to control yourself, you must control yourself. You know, with Taoists, a lot about the doctrine and do a lot of that doesn't matter. The aphorisms of Jesus and the lifestyle practices to them would be what they find interesting. And that to, to, it would, I know enough about Taoism that they would be like, no, this kind of makes some sense. You know, it, it, um, they would probably say, now you don't have Qigong because that's unique to, to Judaism or to, to, uh, to, to uh, Taoism in China. And, uh, like, you know, you, you, you should, you should do some Qigong. <laughs> but you see, we had gymnastics, uh, and, and acrobatics and traditions of athleticism that came out of the ancient world. Um, but it was true that there isn't something like Qigong that's very unique that to, uh, and, and stuff that you're seeing develop out of, out of the, the ortho, orthosphere with Sistema and their, their kind of exercises uh, 
that that's really meant to coordinate the body and and make make boys train to become men. Um, that that you know that that's I think I think there's more more to that's going to be very important. That's going to actually be that that's one of the things that people aren't getting about Sistema is a recruitment tool for the Orthodox. Sistema is a recruitment tool for the Orthodox. People who don't understand that, they, they aren't getting, that's the one thing that the Orthodox could kind of be like, this is a little kooky, a little mystical pants, but the way they present it is, no, this is just simply applying, um, applying science to certain kinds of concepts of self-defense and fighting and movement. Um, it's just the way that it's being applied is unique to then Russian martial arts. And that, that's where they then take it. It's Russian in nature. <coughs> Not Orthodox, Russian. <coughs> so, um, so you don't get a, a kooky mysticism out of the physical traditions of Sistema and Sambo. Um, so, I, it, this was some, I just wanted to, I was rolling this around in my mind, um, a lot of this around in my mind as I was taking a walk today. Got to get some things done. I decided to kind of sleep in a bit and, uh, take it easy for, uh, a day off. Yeah, and also, you see, I'm trying to get the lay of the land because some of this area has changed since I've been in this neighborhood. So... I hope everybody has a great week, and uh, yeah, take care. Bye.